Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today we're going to be completing two box from Hack the Box. This is going to be my first time trying out the guided mode in Hack the Box. So Hack the Box nowadays has this way where if you want to learn ethical hacking and you want to be guided so that you know how to build your own methodology, you can learn using guided mode. So I went and started a retired machine called Toolbox. And the goal here is to use the guided mode so that we can go step by step and learn a methodology and also hopefully learn a specific way to pawn this box here. Otherwise, if you're interested in that, let's get in. My machine's IP address is 10.10.10.236. And the first question in the guided mode is saying, is anonymous authentication allowed on the toolbox FTP server? In order for us to find out if anonymous is allowed, we need to scan this using Nmap. So we're going to go to my Kali Linux machine and I'll say nmap, uh, this is v, this is c. So I'm using default script and I'm also scanning for service versions. Let's do vv here so I can see things in real time. So vv is for verbose. And right away, as you can see, I'm getting 445, 443. Uh, that's interesting. So there's a website running uh, HTTPS and also we have port 21. So the question is anonymous authentication allowed on the toolbox FTP server will be answered here once Nmap is done. So I like to let Nmap run in the background while I also check other things, but in this case, it just finished right away. So I'll go and check the question. So we have port 21, FTP, uh, FileZilla, FTPD, do we have a version somewhere? All right, I see docker toolbox.exe. That's interesting. So this is running for Windows. All right, is anonymous allowed? Yes, anonymous is allowed. So our answer here is yes. Then we submit. So with anonymous, what is the name of the file on the FTP server? We can kind of see here that the file is called docker toolbox.exe because Nmap does enumerate if anonymous is allowed. I can also show you how we can get in there, but that file is inside of the FTP server. So already I'm liking this guided mode because it walks us through how to do this. So let's do an FTP to sign into that machine using anonymous. So this will help with building methodology and makes this less scary. So you type anonymous for the username and also the password is blank. If we do a dir, notice that we have this docker file. So that's the file that they were asking. All right. What domain name provides a virtual host on the web server with a signing in form? We need to go and find out. Let's go and first check our Nmap to see if Nmap will answer this. So our web form is going to be on 443. So in order for this to work, we will need to add admin.megalogistic.com to our Etsy host. So let's do that right now. Nano such Etsy host. And then we give them the IP address. Okay, control X, control Y, enter. Then go back here, HTTPS. Let's do that. Advanced, accept the risk. Boom, we see a username and a password. Okay, so now we know the answer to the question is, this is the domain name admin one. That was from our Nmap results. Can you log in? Can login be bypassed without knowing valid credentials? Yes or no? So let's try SQL injection they're giving us a hint that they might we don't need valid credentials so let's do admin admin login no login fails okay let's try something else let's try this sql payload here what about the second one these are just regular sql payload checks uh, don't save. I like to just try a few. Okay, no. Is that true? <laughs> Let's see. 
No. Okay, so it can be bypassed. That is good, but then I know that I need to try different payloads. So I'll say yes. Then let's find out how. Okay, let's look for SQL payloads. We can brute force this login page using Burp Suite, but I don't want to brute force. I just want to do a clean check. Okay, so here I'm going to look for the admin ones because the page says admin dot something, right? Here is admin dot megacorp. So I'm thinking this is an admin section. So because of that, I'm going to start these admin payloads. Maybe one of the common ones is one is equals to one dash dash admin or one is equals to one. Let's just use it for both username and password. All right, so we're in. Um, I bet we, if we tried a bunch of them, they would have worked. So yes, the admin portal can be logged in. So now that we're in here, let's look in the to do. Send credentials to Tony update printer drivers. Okay, who is Tony? Uh, server setup. This server is running a normal. Okay, great. So now what? Can can login be passed no, without knowing the valid credentials? Yes. So rule here is now that we know that we can do that, always try multiple SQL payloads. That's the takeaway there. Then what is the backend database being used by the site? We can check. I don't know how to find this backend. So do they have a hint? Use tools. Use a tool like SQL Map to quickly enumerate the SQL injection in the login form. Okay, so they're suggesting to use SQL Map. Because I was like, how do I, am I supposed to find the backend? I was trying to avoid SQL Map because of, you know, I went through the OSCP and we don't run. SQL Map can be very loud. But hey, since we're using SQL Map and this is giving us a go ahead to do so, we're going to go ahead and just capture the request and run SQL Map. I'll show you how to use it. So first, Let's open burp. Okay, uh, our proxy intersection is off. I would like to open the browser for burp suite. All right, and now that we did that with burp, let's check our login form. We know that it's injectable, so we should be able to capture this request in burp suite. All right, here I'll just put test, te test, and test pass. I only use burp switch to capture this request so that my SQL map can run correctly. So interception on, hit login. Now we have test, test pass. Right click and save this request. Okay, save item. Um, login SQL.txt. I'll just name it login SQL.txt and I'll put it in my downloads. That way, I don't have to deal with it. So login SQL.txt in my downloads, save it in there. Okay. Now in my terminal, I need to go to my download and run SQL map. Okay. Login SQL. Okay, so SQL map is done. And it says backend database is right here. It says Postgres SQL. So that should be the answer here. All right. What is the flag in what is the flag in SQL map that allows execution commands on remote server? Okay, they're trying to point us that use SQL map to execute commands. All right. SQL map execute commands. So uh, executes operating system commands on the target. So it's OS dash dash OS shell. And this looks like a copy pasta game is not on point. All right, there we go. I was just making it. Okay, submit so the uh, flag located in the Postgres users home directory. So now that we need to use the dash dash OS shell, let's go and craft a SQL map command that will give us, give us the ability to execute commands. So here's what we had. We're going to remove that. Let's just add the option force SSL because we know that this is an it's running on 443. Let's use the batch command and then OS shell. This way, 
we can see if we can just get the oil shale right away. Okay, we get oil shale all the way in the bottom here. I can say there. Uh, Ellis. All right, <laughs> here um the things that we can do. So what do they want us to give them here? Submit the flag located on the Postgres user's home directory. So we should see flag.txt. These are the configuration file. We probably should check this, but PWD, how do you go to the Postgres users? Okay, so this is a little clunky for me. I don't know how to use this properly. So I'm going to get a real shell here. In order for us to do that, let's go here. Let's go to refshells.com. Let's grab our VPN IP address so we can get a full reverse shell. So that'll be that. And then come back here and say, I'd like you to call back here to this IP address. Let's use, yeah, sure, the CTF ports. This is going to be a reverse shell for Linux. It, it looks like a, a Linux bash. That should work. I usually like this one better. Uh, this one should be bin bash or bash, bin bash, bin bash, bin bash, bin bash. Let's just ask it. Hey, do we have bash? Do we have which, which bash? Okay, we, we do have bin bash. So that's how we're going to accept it. So my listener is going to be using netcat. So let's start a listener on Kali in a new tab. Here is our listener. And then let's get a full reverse shell using this command here. Hopefully this one works. If it doesn't, we'll try a different one. Let's copy that. Paste. Sure. No output. Do it. Did I get it? No? Okay, it didn't like that. Uh, that's pretty common. Let's try the bash one. This one, easy, straightforward. Let's paste this one. Nothing. So let's try something here. Let's say, hey, uh, run bash. Bash, can you run a command? And let's put this in single quotes. Maybe that's what it wants. Do you want to retrieve command standard output? Yes or not? Sure. I don't care. All right, we finally got it. So now we have a real reverse show. So a little bit of persistence and a trial and error. If it doesn't work the first time, it's not the end of the world. So we don't have a home here. So we now need to stabilize this shell. Linux stabilize shell export term um, stabilizing a shell. This is all the stuff that I was talking about. And then export term to export to X term. Uh, after doing so many CTFs, this becomes a just a normal part of your process. You need to stabilize your shells. All right, so this is the Postgres user's home. To get to their home, I said it tilde forward slash post. I was like, where is this home? It's weird because their home is in valib Postgres, and now here's the user.txt. That was a trip. All right, so guided mode is working for us. Task 8, Docker toolbox runs in boot to docker linux distribution what is the default password for the docker user in that distribution okay so they want us to just google this so look up look, default credentials for that stack overflow for the to the rescue user is docker and password is tc user i didn't know that so that's good we currently have access to docker container what is the ip address of the host machine IPA, IP config. 
if config so if the docker host um docker container is 172.17.02 the host is usually on dot one that's how docker sets the network so change that to a dot one that should be it yeah and let's check what they said in their hint the host typically is dot one address on the subnet you could use also run a ping sweep yeah we can have done a ping sweep but it's common knowledge to know that dot one will be there so we only have two things to go i am a big fan of this guided mode especially if we are learning something new and we're casually just learning nothing too demanding here this is really great so if you like this please give me a thumbs up so that i can keep making videos like this if you this is something that you want to keep seeing what is the name of the file that contains the administrator's private ssh key well now that we know the host and we're in a container maybe we need to escape this container and in order for us to, SS to escape this container we already know that the default user is docker and tc user is the password so we can ssh to that ssh ssh docker and the host okay now it's asking for a password so my terminal needed to be stabilized so i need to use python make sure that i give it bin bash export the term now i think it's the password was tc user so like that all right so we are now on the host sudo dash l all right we are actually root, root on the host so that's good let's check what are they asking us what is the name of the file that contains the administrator's private ssh key ash history but we are looking for an administrator's key so let's go to cd.ssh ls in here so it's not that it's not the authorized keys so cd cd search home do i have administrator in here docker wait a second this is docker running on windows so this is actually a windows machine because nmap showed us windows so cd cd can i do this okay ls c okay we can interact with the system so i need to, to remember the syntax okay ls c no it's slash c slash users administrator ls c users that should be a thing ls slash c oh it's case sensitive ls slash c users administrator perfect so here's the administrator where does windows keep ssh keys is it still a dot ssh i bet it is dot ssh yes we have it id underscore rsa is right here so that's the key just like in linux submit the flag located in the administrator's desktop i mean since we have the administrator's key we can get it and ssh is the administrator or we can try to cat that but uh let's do cat id underscore rsa perfect now let's grab it bring it to our kali and give it the correct permissions i'm just going to put it in my temp nano admin underscore rsa paste control x y enter mod 600 admin let's go i say ssh at now we need to give them the actual ip address of the machine ah uh, yes all right so now we're in the administrator cd desktop because that's where the, the, the box usually puts the flag type root.txt since it's windows all right this was an easy machine yet i learned a little bit here from it by just using guided mode i think this is more valuable than just trying to do it blindly macho man kind of stuff we did it so thank you very much for following along if you like this please remember to like this video and share it with everybody otherwise thank you for being here and i hope to see you next time